a child too. And today we will be doing uh, online player detector. Oops. Okay, so now, well, we're gonna start with four VRP cloud variables because you might already have cloud variables. But to do this, you have to be a in a scratcher status. Let me show you what I mean. See this thing right here has to say scratcher. Usually at the beginning it will say do scratcher, but it needs to say scratcher. It may not look the same as this because I have scratch add-ons, but you, I think you get the full idea. Okay, so now what we can do is we have these four cloud variables now. Just make them anything so I just select the variables. Let's begin. When green flag clicked, in fact, let's make a new variable called player number. False, right? So we'll make a new block called check for players or false refresh. Okay, so now we will set let's make a new variable called i for this part only we'll set i to p1 we'll wait one second if wait not just p1 because if i set to p1 then if we do i is equal to p1 that it will automatically check as correct when it's a really long time let me show you so let's do this let's set p1 to that and then let's set i to that but there's a one here now if we put them you can see they're different right but if you do this wait what well, i think it needs to be longer so if i start here okay now let's see so if i set p1 to this i said to this the add one look it's gonna show that's true because Sometimes you want to store really long values, so like we don't want that to happen. But if we set P1 to join a letter, and then we put this value, and, and then we set I to join this value but one, then it says false. Now you saw that that was different. So now it, it, this will help us make sure that it is of doing the calculations correctly so yeah now we can just set i to join a p1 wait what seconds if i to join a p1 that means nobody is in the game no one is using player one also set player number to zero here so as we can just set our player number to what <laughs> okay and then we can stop the script because we don't want to continue after that because after this we're going to put we're going to duplicate this whole thing Set I to join IP2. Wait one second. If I is to P2, then we set player number to 2. Duplicate this whole thing. And then we change these to P3 and set player number to 3. And then these ones to P4. And then we set player number to 4. So now we can add the check for players here. Now, if I show my player number. Oh, yeah. Also, let's add forever. New custom block named add cloud data you just oh yeah you have to do this for all the cloud variables that you have right now i have four so i only don't need to do this four times add cloud data so now if else so if our player number is less than three so that means a3 we put here will be one or two these ones will be three or four because we want to put in the cloud values. So add if player number is less than two, which means that it's going to be one. So we set P1 to, let's just set it to our X position. Actually don't, let's set it to timer because our timer is always moving. And if our X position is dead in place, then so else will take our spot. Else we set P2 to timer. We could duplicate this, but then here, if player number is less than four, let me set this to P3 and then this to P4. So you can add cloud data here. Now let's show the cloud variables. Let's see what happens. So now when I start, oh wait, it's laggy because I think I put this as raw files refresh. Yep. Okay, but as, as you can see, we are using P1. You can literally see that P1's changing every second. <clears throat> 
And now, well, if I duplicate this tab, and then I put click this one as you can see right here. Look, it sets the player number to two, and this one's player number is one, and they're both changing. Isn't that cool? So now uh, it updates every second because it ha I have two tabs open, they're not separate windows. So now we have a detector, right? We can detect if someone is in here now. How? Well, let me show you guys. So now that we have check for players here, you know, that basically does it. So right here, all, I th all we have to do is just add check for players. But wait, you might realize. This will show it, it sets our player number. We don't want our player number to be set. So instead of doing that, how about we make a new custom block called. Wait, no, well, let's rename this one. Let's copy that control C and let's delete this one. Join game. And then let's make a new block called check for players. Okay. So basically, let's duplicate everything in the join game. Because we still need this concept. So remove the stop the scripts. Okay. And then you see these if i is equal to. Add, put the change it to not i is equal to. So every if it should be not and then the equation. I know, I know, it's a lot of work. And make sure you have no stop the scripts or else it's going to only set the player to, to 2 as a max and that's it. Okay. So now, here in the check for, so this one's join game is right here. We don't want the join game, we want the check for players. Okay, so now, we don't need to set our player number instead. Let's make a new variable called players for all sprites. Now we can set players to one here. Okay, so now, <clears throat> Actually, let's set it to zero technically because we're going to be counting ourselves here. So instead, replace these sets with changes because we're going to change the player and then replace these ones for players. So change players by okay, and now make sure all of them is change players by one, not just change players by two, by three, by four, just change players by one. Okay, so now if I show the players. And then I reload the other side. So as you can see, there's only one player. It's it's changing from zero to one because it resets every time. And now if we join the game, then you're going to see look it shows two players. <clears throat> look at that, two players all at different times. Is is it isn't that just so cool? But then as you see it goes all the way from zero to what? Well, if we wanted to go faster, we could just put 0 0.1 seconds. So that only take, so since I have low coverage, so that only shows 0 to 1 because, but now, because I dragged this other one here, so now it's showing all the way 0, 1, 2. Which is still pretty slow, but it, because cloud variables only update one, wait no, they update, how do I explain? They update every one tenth of a second. So in one sub second, they only update ten times. And Scratch runs three frames a second, so three frames are missed every single time. So yeah, that explains why it's going to have to do this. We cannot control that, so that's why we cannot exactly. Like, let's see what happens if we do it to zero seconds. As you see, it doesn't even know the player two is there because it's because it's detecting it. So okay, wait. So now it's starting to click from one to two, as you can see. But like, it's still kind of like weird because it's moving way too fast for its own self. So we had to put it to like be zero point zero five. Okay, let's see how that is. If if zero point zero five doesn't work. And that is got set to 0 0.1, because that's one tenth of a second. As you see, it's kind of good, but not that good. What if we set to run file screen refresh? Now that's just gonna make the game so laggy. 
Yeah, we're not doing that today. So instead we're just gonna stick with this, cause this is the best we can do. So wait, what if I re? Because I haven't reloaded the other side yet. So now if we do that, yep, and only the text. If there, that, there's one player. So we have to set to zero point one. Save now. Reload this side. Okay, and as you saw, it showed P three, player three, because. The other one just left, so it was detecting that too. And why is this one also player one? Okay, there you go. So now, as you see, player two is like changing <clears throat> the player's jump. But now, as you saw, it is exactly that accurate. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to set it to how it is every second. So replace these players, let's rename it to just players. For this sprite, wait, actually, you know, I have Scratch on so I can convert to this sprite only, but you don't have to. And let's make a new variable called Players with capitalized for all sprites. So when green flag clicked, forever. Wait one second. Set players to players. Okay, so now if I show the players, okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. So now, uh, if I click this one, add it to joining. It takes a while, but now as you can see, P2 is loading right there. As you see, the player's number is zero, well, zero, because every time, I guess, it just checks that zero. But anyways, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and share, pass it off the channel. Hit the notification bell, have a wonderful day. Please, thank you guys so much for all this. Please, thank you. Like, I would have never been able to make this for